Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Mia Tiffany, and welcome to the Tiffany Club, where we are rediscovering some of the greatest classic films throughout history. Today, we are diving deep into the mind of the master of suspense himself, Alfred Hitchcock, with the romantic psychodrama, Rebecca. Before we get started, I would like to shout out my Golden Oscar patrons. Thank you all so much for becoming a VIP Tiffany Club member and supporting the channel. If you'd like to get your hands on the full monthly schedule, have early access to our videos, and have access to our movies with me a live stream, then I highly suggest that you check out that Patreon link in the description box below. If you're not quite interested in becoming a VIP member, however you still want to support the channel, why not give a super thanks? Giving a super thanks is super easy. Click on the heart icon titled thanks, which is located right above the subscribe button. Choose the amount you would like to donate for a one-time donation. Add your debit, credit, or PayPal information, and then hit buy. If that's something you're interested in, then I highly encourage you to give a super thanks. And thank you so much. It is greatly appreciated. Rebecca was released in 1940, directed by Sir Alfred Hitchcock, starring Laurence Olivier and Joan Fontaine, with other notable performances by George Sanders and Judith Anderson. Okay, on to a quick synopsis of the film. It says, a woman struggles with adjusting to her new role as an aristocrat's wife and living up to the expectations of his first wife. Ooh, this sounds like this is going to be fun. I'm very excited to watch this. So at this point, we are going to get into some historical background. For those of you who want to jump right onto the film reaction, go for it. But for those of you who want to stay, we're going to get right into it. Rebecca was originally a novel written by Daphne du Maurier in 1938. Du Maurier was inspired by some of the events in Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre when writing her novel Rebecca. After Rebecca was published, it was an instant hit in both England and in the US. There was a lot of excitement about making this novel into a picture. Kay Brown, an East Coast story editor, had recommended this novel to big time movie producer David O. Selznick. And it was also Kay Brown who had recommended Gone with the Wind to him as well. So her recommendations were pretty spot on. So Selznick was impressed with the novel and decided to buy the film rights for $50,000, which in today's money would be worth just shy of $1 million. Selznick also hired on Alfred Hitchcock to direct the film after noticing his success streak in England. During the production of this film, there were some creative differences between Selznick and Hitchcock. Selznick really wanted to stick as closely to the book as possible and Hitchcock wanted to lighten some of the dark gothic themes of the story. Now, Selznick would eventually go on to write Hitchcock about his disdain of some of the substitutions that Hitchcock added, saying, quote, we bought Rebecca and we intend to make Rebecca, end quote. Now, despite these differences, Rebecca was received very well with the audiences, and it actually went on to be nominated for 11 Oscars at the 13th Annual Academy Awards, and it won two, including Best Picture. Okay, on to some interesting facts. Now, before this movie's release, Selznick allowed Orson Welles to release a radio version of Rebecca, and unsurprisingly, it was a huge hit, because as we know, everything that Orson Welles touches turns to gold. <laughs> so this was meant Meant to draw up a lot of publicity for the film version and once the radio version was released to the public everyone was super excited to watch the film version of Rebecca. Filming for Rebecca started on September 8th 1939 which was just less than a week after the UK entered World War II. Now this became slightly problematic because um, a lot of the members of the cast were British. So 80 years later in October of 2020 Netflix released a remake of Rebecca starring Lily James and Army Hammer. And then finally, this is the first Criterion Collection film that we are watching where I actually bought the physical copy of the film. I was so impressed with just the amount of care that they put into making just the packaging of this. And if you compare it to like, say, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, this feels really plastic. Like it's just a case to hold a DVD. But this one is like, really well packaged. By the way, this video was not sponsored. I literally just wanted to share that with you because I was just blown away by the packaging. Um, now, <laughs> with all that being said, 
I am very excited to get into this film, but before we do, y'all already know the deal. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification to stay in the loop. All right, everyone, it is time to grab your snacks, grab your drinks, and let's get in to Rebecca. Rebecca. Also, Laurence Olivier. This is our second film with Laurence Olivier. Oh, yes. Mandalay, secretive and silent. Time could not mar the perfect symmetry of those walls. The descriptory dialogue in this beginning is fantastic. And there's Lawrence Olivier! <laughs> no, don't jump! No, stop! Get on with your walking. Don't hang about here screaming. He was literally just about to jump, dude. She literally just saved your life, bro. How do you do? How dashing. What do you think of Monte Carlo? Or don't you oh think my it's god, he's looking at her! Oh, well, well, I think it's rather <laughs> You can just tell on his face that he is already intrigued with her, and I'm here for it. Oh no. This is not good. <laughs> But you were just a teeny weeny bit forward with Mr. De Winter. Your effort to enter the conversation quite embarrassed me, and I'm sure it did him. Her forwardness, she didn't even say anything to him. She looked like she was so scared to talk to this De Winters guy. Mademoiselle will have lunch with me. Oh, um, I, I couldn't possibly. <laughs> okay, I'm here for oh, it. Well. I wasn't being polite. I should have asked you to have lunch with me, even if we hadn't upset the bar so clumsily. Come along. Oh, he is so dashing. Oh my god. And it's it's made better by Laurence Olivier's performance. Is Mrs. Van Hopper a friend of yours? Or? No, she's my employer. I'm what is known as a paid companion. Right. I looked up the word companion in the dictionary once. It said, a friend of the bosom. <laughs> I can tell that her character is very, like, n like, naive. Like, not having a whole lot of, like, world experience. Are you going sketching this afternoon? Yes. Where? Well, I haven't made up my mind. Oh, I'll drive you somewhere in the car. Oh, no, please, I didn't mean... It's like, no, please, it's totally fine. You don't have to take care of me, you gorgeous man! <laughs> Do you know Cornwall at all? Yes, I went there once with my father on holiday. I saw a, a postcard with a beautiful house on it right by the sea, and the old lady said, that's Mandalay. I like the dialogue of this film so far because it doesn't feel, like, like doctored in any way. I don't know if that makes sense, but it feels like a very natural very natural conversation between two people. Yeah, I'm really liking the dialogue so far. It's just the place where I was born. I've lived in all my life. Now, I don't suppose I shall ever see it again. As soon as he started talking about his home, Manderly, his whole entire demeanor changed. He went from like, pleasantly dashing to suddenly there's like, secrets. Before she married, she was the beautiful Rebecca Hildreth, you know. She was drowned oh. poor dear, when she was sailing near Mandalay. He never talks about it, of course, but he's a broken man. Oh, so Rebecca is not this woman. Rebecca is De Winter's wife that had passed at Manderley. Okay. You keen on tennis? No, not particularly. That's good. We'll go for a drive. Why is he so perfect for this role? <laughs> Oh my god! And mind you, the only other time that I've seen Laurence Olivier was in The Prince and the Showgirl. So now to see him talking in his native accent, being dashing as ever. <laughs> I just, I think I just found my new celebrity crush. <laughs> as soon as I get over this nasty old cold, I promise to keep you from being bored here in Monty because I know that's just what you must be. Bored, bored, bored. Oh, he's definitely not bored. He's definitely being occupied. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, this romance is kind of sweet. I wish that could be an invention that bottled up the memory like perfume. That is a great Sometimes idea. You know, those little bottles contain demons that have a way of popping out at you. She's all like, I want to remember this moment forever. And he's like, well, you don't want to remember everything forever because there could be skeletons lurking in your, you know, closet. Like, what a mood killer. <laughs> Would you please tell me, Mr. DeWinter? Why you asked me to come out with you? Because I wanted your company. Oh my god, is he falling in love with her? What is going on? I came to Monte Carlo with this woman who I am employed with, and I found this extremely gorgeous, very rich man. Like, life just worked out. <laughs> What do you think? My daughter's engaged to be married. Oh, really? How nice. We must leave for New York at once. Get reservations like, on the leave. Aquitania. <laughs> She's like, I don't want to leave. I just met the man of my dreams. Has Mr. DeWinter come in yet? Would you connect me, please? Where's I've packed? Well, come on, the car's waiting at the door. 
Oh my god, he's calling her. Oh my god, and she misses the call. No. Would you ring Mr. De Winter, please? Yes, madam. He's in the shower. <laughs> oh my god. It just wasn't meant to be, honey. It just wasn't meant to be. Go to New York and, you know, find another gorgeous aristocrat, charming man who makes you feel like a queen. I feel so bad for her. We're going away. Which would you prefer? New York or Mandalay? You mean you want a secretary or something? I'm asking you to marry me, you little fool. <laughs> what? They only know each they've only known each other for a couple days. Oh my god, what is she gonna decide? Obviously she's gonna decide to marry him. Because I mean look at him. I don't belong in your sort of world for, for one thing. Of course if you don't love me, that's a different thing. Fine blow to my conceit, that's all. Oh I do No love you're I love you most. Dreadfully. No, it's not love. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. You can't fall in love with someone in three days. That's not love. That's infatuation. And that is not a basis to get married on. Who's going to break the news to Mrs. Van Hopper? Shall you or shall I? Oh, you tell it. She'll be so angry. What's the number of her room? Oh, oh my God. Was she's so downstairs in the car. I would be bad at this. <laughs> I'm like the person that's like, don't marry him, girl, because you're just infatuated with him. But I am the same woman that would literally be falling in love with him. Like... <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. Also, look at the way he looks at her, y'all. I can't. Hello? And she's excited because she's been like calling him weirdly for some reason. I would fall so fast in love with this man. <laughs> I asked you up here in order to tell you of my engagement. She's gonna be pissed. Who is the lucky lady? I apologize for depriving you of your companion oh, in this and abrupt way. Can I just can I just comment on that? that pan into her face when she realizes that de winter is engaged to her employee oh that was a beautiful way to depict that moment happened, wow tennis lessons my foot i suppose i have to hand it to you for a fast worker how did you manage it i love the use of the pannons in this film i wonder if that is like a trademark of Hitchcock that was then used later on to show suspense. I don't know. You better leave, Mrs. Van Hopper. You'll miss your train. Mrs. De Winter. Goodbye, my dear, and good luck. I'm telling you, as much as we all want to fall in love with Maxim De Winter, okay? He's gorgeous, dashing. The way he looks at her just makes your heart melt. But there's something else to him, and I just... I don't completely trust him. And why did he want to get married to her so quickly? You know, just questions. You gotta start asking yourself the, the questions of like, you've only known each other for a couple of days. Why do you want to get married to her so quickly? Mm, something's not completely right. There's Mandalay. That's Mandalay. Oh wow, it actually is really beautiful. Gorgeous. It looks kind of like a cottage-ish. Cottage manor? Manor? I don't know my house jargon, okay? I'd be terrified. I have everything in readiness for you. That's very good of you. I, Ooh, I didn't expect it. This is Danvers. She gave her the up and down look. She was like, oh no. <laughs> this is like making my nerves bad. Mrs. Danvers, I, I do hope we'll be friends. I hope I shall do everything to your satisfaction, madam. I've managed the house since Mrs. De Winter's death, and Mr. De Winter has never complained. Her eyes say so much. Like, she says things, you can tell she is a woman who's very dedicated to her work, but her eyes tell a very different story. She is, like, looking at this new bride all up and down, like, mm-hmm. You think you belong here, but you don't belong here. Like, you just see it in her eyes. That room in the West Wing I was telling you about is there through that door. The only one that looks down across the lawns to the sea. Was Mrs. De Winter's room. I knew it. I knew it was De Mrs. De Winter's room. There'd be no other reason to board it up. Oh, and there's like a dog that just sits right in front of it. Oh, I wonder if they decided to use a black dog or like a darkly coated dog be to kind of signify like an omen of some sort. I don't know. Could be me. I love the the music in this. I think the music really does set the tone between scenes also because it's like the music starts to change a little bit. Like it was like lighthearted and, and fun and now it's still lighthearted but there's like little notes of of something a little bit darker in the music. Getting a she's like home. still totally in love with him. Have a look at the Times. There's a thrilling article on what's the matter with English cricket. Oh my god. 
Lord, it's Olivier. I could not act with this man. I would actually, in real life, fall in love with him. Ah, my sister Beatrice and her husband, Giles Lacey, have invited themselves over for lunch. Today? She's yeah. like, already? He's literally leaving her to deal with his sister and her hus and her and her husband. His sister and his sister's husband. That's weird to say. There's that dog again. Yeah, that I wonder if that dog is always like that dog is always there whenever it's a room that the that Rebecca would frequent. So yeah, I wonder if this is like her study or something. I don't know. Oh, I'm afraid you've made a mistake. Mrs. DeWint has been dead for over a year. Oh, I mean, she's like, I'm, <laughs> she's like, wait a second, I'm Mrs. DeWinter. She's so out of her depth. It's almost like she's expected to live up to this sort of idea, this role that I don't think that she's ready for at all. She had some pretty high profile friends. <gasps> I like that phone call that she received and she's like, oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. DeWinter has been dead for over a year. And then she hangs it up and she's like, wait, but I am Mrs. DeWinter. <laughs> uh, shall we sit down? You see, she's bound to be insanely jealous at first and she must resent you bitterly. Why? Why should she? She simply adored Rebecca. So that's why she's all dark inside because she's like, you're ta like I said, she's like, you're taking a place that is not yours. Like... Oh no, that could spell trouble. My dear, are you fond of dancing? Well, I love it, but I'm not very good at it. <laughs> uh, so, but I'm trying to find out exactly what your wife does do. Uh, uh, she sketches a little. He doesn't even know what his wife does, because they only knew each other for like two days. He doesn't even know her. What? Don't sail, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. Huh? Oh, so he wasn't supposed to mention sailing. Oh no, what does that mean? Why don't you do something about your hair? No, it looks perfect. Why don't you have it cut I can see by the way you dress, you don't care a hoot how you look. Wow. He must have changed a lot then. Wow, the sister is really forward. I'm here for it. You know the whole story. No, she doesn't. I don't even think I know the whole story. Now we can have a walk about the place. Run and get a coat from the flower room for Mrs. DeWinter, will you? Just hearing her being called Mrs. DeWinter doesn't even sound like right because. I feel like this whole film, we've been conditioned to think of Rebecca as Mrs. De Winter and like this woman as his new wife, you know? Where does that lead to? Oh, it leads to a little cove where we used to keep a boat. Oh, let's go down there. All right, we'll walk down and take a look at the red one too. Oh my God, I love this. <laughs> I love the romance of it, but I just feel like it's too good to be true. He's hurt himself. No, he's all right. Leave him alone. Don't you think I'd better go and see? Don't bother about him, I tell you. He can't come to any harm. He'll find his own way back. Something happened there. There's no way. There's no way he's reacting like that because it, there's something happened there. Ooh, and it opened by itself. Don't go in there. I know that dog. He comes from the house. Ooh. He's Mr. DeWinter's dog. You are Mrs. DeWinter. Ooh, that's weird. Uh-uh, I didn't like the way he looked at her. Rebecca DeWinter. Oh my goodness. She had some affiliation with that cottage. You know I didn't want you to go there, but you deliberately went. Well, Ooh. Why not? Because I hate the place, and if you had my memories, you wouldn't go there or talk about it or even think about it. We should never have come back to Mandalay. He knows there's something that happened. There's something that he is not telling her. Secrets. Skeletons in the closet. Are those all Rebecca's things down there? Yes. She was washed overboard. Wasn't she afraid to go out like that alone? She wasn't afraid of anything. Everyone knows something that this woman, whose name has still not been mentioned, okay? This woman and the audience don't know. They know something because they're all super secretive and super shady. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. They're all comparing me with her. Yep. With Rebecca. You have qualities that are just as important. really big shoes More to fill. More important, if I may say so. So throughout this film, there you really do get the sense that she is being compared to this glorious Rebecca De Winter. But then also there are people who are like, yeah, you're really sweet. Like they're like comparing her, but then also reassuring her that she's like good or in a good position. And it just feels really strange. I don't know why. Tell me, what was Rebecca really like? I suppose she was the most beautiful creature I ever saw. Oh, well that makes you feel good, huh? Literally just negated everything he said to her to reassure her. Oh, she's trying. 
think there's some things right for you. Doesn't seem your type at all. She Sorry. loves him so desperately. <laughs> you look lovely, lovely. Like I don't think that he loves her the way that she loves him. And the tragedy is that like she's trying to fill these shoes of this woman who I'm not even really sure existed at this point, okay? Because we still have not seen her. And it's just sad. It's like, don't compare yourself to someone who you'll never be, you know? It appears that Mrs. Danvers has accused Robert of stealing a valuable ornament from the morning room. What was the thing, anyway? A China Cupid, sir. Oh, dear, that's one of our treasures, isn't it? It was... It was the thing that she broke. That is... Oh! I broke the China Cupid. You broke it? Is it possible to repair the ornament, madam? Smashed into pieces. She looks mad. Look at Frith. <laughs> Frith was even scared for a second. He was looking like, oh no, what's gonna go down? She kept her composure, but her eyes were like this. Mrs. Danvers must be furious with me. Oh, hang Mrs. Danvers. Oh, Why she else is. should you be frightened of her? Because she's scary. Like a upstairs maid or something. I do love how she, how Danvers really keeps her composure the whole time because you don't know what she's thinking. I mean, you can see it in her eyes, right? But, like, she's so calm about it. And it just, it intensifies things. I suppose that's why you married me. There could never be any gossip about me. Gossip? Whoa. Uh, Whoa, the lighting I on his face. I also like how he really kept the audience in the dark here. Like, in this film, we're really as much in the dark as, you know, this woman who is this new Mrs. De Winters. Have gone up to London on some business of the estate. I shall return before evening, and certainly this brief holiday from me should be welcome, Maxim. She's like in despair. She's like, where's my Maxim? I'm sure she does not like that house. Or the people living in it. Looking for me, <laughs> left his little bride all alone. This is Mr. Favell, madam. I am Rebecca's favorite cousin. Ooh, one of Rebecca's family members. Toodaloo. Oh my god, I don't know what to- I love this- this suspense! I don't know what to think right now. I'm so lost. Don't go in there, girl. Don't do it. I know you want to. It's on your face. Oh, she's about to go in. Of course, the room is big. She looks so small in this big space. And it's like symbolic of her, like not being able to fill these shoes of Mrs. De Winter. That's really, I see what you did there, Hitchcock. I see what you did there. It's a picture of Maxim. Mm. kind of tells us that she really loved him. I love how we get the characterization of Rebecca. She really is a main character in this film, yet she's never physically seen. So that's really cool that we kind of get that in this. This is where I keep all her clothes. She's this. like, this is weird. <laughs> they were made specially for her by the nuns in the convent of St. Clair. Oh, wow. How glorious that her, her, uh, like her drawers like open like kind of like a lazy susan almost where it like opens up and it's just like it's just so glorious wow i always used to wait up for her no matter how late sometimes she and mr de winter didn't come home until dawn very much admired her just hearing of the greatness of rebecca how everyone loved her all these things it's furthering this poor woman's idea of herself like i'm never going to be this i could never be this for max for manderley like i'm not this woman like it's this is a lot poor girl did you ever see anything so delicate it is delicate wow like she looks visibly uncomfortable about this entire situation like, it's kind of making me uncomfortable a little bit. I'm like, I feel that secondhand, like, discomfort. Do you think the dead come back and watch the living? I know. I don't believe it. I wonder if she doesn't come back here to Manderley. Watch you and Mr. De Winter together. You know, that's probably not something that she wants to hear. It's probably not something she wants to hear. She's constantly surrounded by ideas and thoughts of Rebecca. <laughs> it's like haunting her. I am Mrs. De Winter now. <laughs> Mrs. Danvers! Gotta watch out for her. Maxim, Maxim, you were gone all day. Could we have a costume ball? I feel that we ought to do something to, to, to make people feel that Mandalay is just the same as it always was. Instead of cowering and like running away and being afraid, she stood her ground and she's like, no, I am the new Mrs. De Winter. And she like stood her ground. Okay, honey. I see you, boo. You might find a costume among the family portraits that would suit you. Oh, you mean those at the top of the stairs? I'll go and look at them. 
She is staging a war. Oh my goodness. I've heard Mr. De Winter say that this is his favorite of all the paintings. Oh, well, well, well that's a splendid idea, Mrs. Danvers. I'm, I'm very grateful. Um, I don't trust her. I don't trust her at all. Mm-mm. I wonder if that's Rebecca, and that costume is going to get a rise out of De Winter. Oh my god, I think that's what's going to happen. <gasps> you were the first one now? Yes. Where's the child? Well, she's keeping a costume, a terrific Where's secret. Where's the child? Wouldn't even let me into her room. Oh, lovely. Oh, please don't come in, Beatrice. I don't want anyone to see my costume. Every single aspect of this film has some sort of, like, suspenseful leading on the audience. What's going to happen next? How's everyone going to react? Like, he truly is the master of suspense. I just... Ah, I'm scared. I know something is off. Good evening, Mr. De Winter. Oh my god! Ah, what did I say? What did I say? Dan versus staging a war? Oh! I watched you go down, just as I watched her a year ago. Even in the same dress, you couldn't compare. You knew it! You Never trust your enemy, dude! Mmm, that naivety got her this time. Am I done to you that you should ever hate me so? You tried to take her back. I knew it! Him marry you. <laughs> I've seen his face. He doesn't love you. He wants to be alone again with her. You've nothing to live for, really, have you? She's just tearing her down emotionally and mentally. Oh, this scene is so powerful. And we feel with this woman everything. You are strong. You can do this. Fight her. I'm talking as if she can listen, she can't hear me! She's like, you could never compare to her. Like, what are you even doing? Like, just tearing her down. That was, that was, and, but here's the thing. She did it, keeping her composure. Very sinister stuff. I knew where Rebecca's body was because I put it there. What? <laughs> Wait a second. Did he just confess to murder? Did he just... Did he murder Rebecca? Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. What is going on? <laughs> oh my god. How could we be close when I knew you were always thinking of Rebecca? You thought I loved Rebecca? I hated her. <gasps> oh my god! That changes everything! This whole time, I'm thinking to myself, he just loved her so much, and he's grieving her death. But no, he just literally said he hated her! <laughs> I want to hear his story, okay. I was told I was the luckiest man in the world, but I never had a moment's happiness with her. She was incapable of love. She stood there laughing and told me all about herself. Oh my God, so what did Rebecca do? <laughs> I want like an origin story of Rebecca now. I, I need to know more about her. So I'll play the part of a devoted wife, mistress of your precious Mandalay. I'll make it the most famous show place in England, if you like. I kept the bargain and so did she apparently. Oh, she played the game brilliantly. So it's like we're really getting a full character analysis or a full character development of someone who we don't actually ever see. I think that is fantastic. And there was a cousin of hers, a man named Favell. Yes, I know him. Why didn't you tell me? I thought it would remind you of Rebecca. So I wonder if he really did marry this woman because he really actually found love with her. D literally, this plot twist just changed the entire perspective of the film. Oh my god. When I found that she'd come back quietly from London, I thought that Favelle was with her. And I knew then that I couldn't stand this life of filth and deceit any longer. Okay, so Favelle is not Rebecca's cousin. I think Favelle is, might be her lover. At least that's what it sounds like. That is so twisted. A large tray of cigarette stubs beside her. Suddenly she got up started to walk toward me. Oh but my god, and they're using the camera angles to literally show us her movements. They're li they're literally characterizing a person who doesn't actually exist in terms of like like physically. Like she isn't physically there and yet they're making her be there. That is so strange. She must have struck her. Almost triumphant. She stumbled and fell. It's almost like she wanted him to kill her. Like to say, I got you, even in death. Oh my gosh. I remember wondering why she was still smiling, and I realized she was dead. She, but you didn't kill her. She fell. It was an accident. Who would believe me? Yeah. 
Yeah, and and who would believe him because she's <laughs> she's literally shown herself as like the devoted, perfect wife. Nobody knows about her like secret life except for him. So no one would believe him. The writing. If they find out it was Rebecca, you must simply say that you made a mistake about the other body. She can't harm you anymore. We're the only two That's people in the true. world that know Maxim, you and I. She literally has not been shown this entire film and still, somehow, she is still the strongest character in this film. There's nothing you can do. She won. I've loved you, my darling. He really did love her. No, no, no. She hasn't won. No matter what happens now, she hasn't won. Bro, she totally won. <laughs> Like, I'm just so blown away at the fact that she literally has not even been physically shown, yet she holds more power. The freaking movie is named after her, okay? This is, this is Rebecca's movie. She is the shining star of the film, and we don't even see her. I am floored. I don't mind this whole thing, except for you. He loves her! Oh. <laughs> we still have this strong romance that we can still root for, you know, that we're like, oh, okay, he truly loves her, he truly wants to be with her, which I like. I don't know nothing. I don't want to go to the asylum. Clearly he didn't see anything, okay, move on. Anyway, okay. let me go. I feel bad that I misjudged him in the beginning. He was a little creepy, I'm not gonna lie, but you know what, he truly was just kind of like a, a bystander. Mr. De Winter, please. <sighs> I have to ask you a very personal question. Were relations between you and the late Mrs. De Winter perfectly happy? She looks like she's literally about to blow and say something and screw everything up. She just needs to chill out. I won't stand this any longer and you might as well know now. <gasps> <gasps> we'll adjourn to after lunch. Mr. De Winter, I presume you'll be available for us then? Oh my god. This is so intense. Darling, if you wait here a few moments, I'll see if I can find old Frank. And how does the bride find herself today? You know, you've grown up a bit since I last saw you. What do you want, Flavio? You can also kind of see that in the the wardrobe or the costuming choices that they've used throughout the film. She looks like she really has grown up. Like this really has taken the innocence right out of her. I find myself in a rather awkward position. It's from Rebecca. What's more, she had the foresight to put a date on it. But I can assure you that it is not the note of a woman who intends to drown herself that same night. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of like Favel's character. Like. He's like, he's sly, but he does it very, like, charismatically. He's like, I know what's going on, you know? Like, I don't know. I really like his character, even though I feel like he's a bad guy. He offered to withhold a vital piece of evidence from the inquest if I made it worth his while. Just seen the doctor, and I'm going down to Mandalay right away. I have something terribly important to tell you. Rebecca. I thought the letter was going to be something like like more in depth like you know starting a new life hey maybe this kid might be yours i still don't know if that's her cousin ah here she is the missing link oh, the Mrs. witness danvers. will help supply the motive colonel oh julia mrs danvers i believe you know everyone else and we know Thank that you. she is like in total admiration of rebecca so she's oh something's gonna go down i feel it who was Rebecca's doctor? I don't know anything about that. Oh, don't give me that, Danny. You knew everything about Rebecca. You knew she was in love with me, didn't you? Love was a game to her. Only a game. It made her laugh, I tell you. I knew that, I knew that she admired that dark side of Rebecca. I knew it. It has been suggested Mrs. De Winter was deliberately murdered. The name of the murderer, it's a lovely name. George Fortescue Maximilian De Winter. Look at her face. The first time she's shown emotion on her face. <gasps> We don't want reminiscences, Danny. What was his name? Dr. Baker, 165 Goldhawk Road, Shepherd's Bush. There you are, Colonel. There's where you'll find your motive. He is just a little freaking rat. That is the first time I'd ever seen emotion on her face. I've never attended Mrs. De Winter in my life. The lady must have used an assumed name. The woman was very seriously ill. What was wrong with her? Cancer. That would have given her motive to want to take her life. Literally, this plan the Favelle had literally backfired on him. That's what you get for being a douchebag. There was nothing that could be done for her except wait. She smiled in a queer sort of way. When I told her it was a matter of months, she said, Oh no, Doctor, not that long. She knew she was gonna die, and she had pla like she planned this. She planned this. Cunning woman. Please just let them live in peace, Danvers. Please. They've been through so much. Oh my god, she's gonna set a she's gonna set a fire. She's gonna set a fire. I can I can see it. She has the candle, she has the crazy eyes. 
Oh my god, she's gonna commit arson! Just drive. It's, it's a fire. That's not the Northern Lights. That's Mandolin. She's totally dead. There's no way that she survived that. Oh, she made it out. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you that she made it out. I was literally freaking out. Is she, she's in there. She looks crazy. That final scene with the eye. Oh. What a film. That was fantastic. That had me on the edge of my seat from beginning to end. Like, wow. All of the twists. And at the end, it just kept coming. Just new information. Just pow, pow, pow right at us. I mean, that was fantastic. I think that was so good. She, you never saw Rebecca. And yet she was such a prevalent figure in this film so the fact that they were able to make this character so real and so like visceral without actually having her physically there is astounding it was fantastic and then the plot twists were like we got to see a different side of rebecca not this brilliant beautiful cunning woman but this like sadistic sinister monster even though Mr. De Winter, Maxim didn't tell us what she had said to him after those four days of marriage. We still got the sense that it was something that was a lot darker than, you know, what she was letting on on the surface. I definitely have to give that one a 10. Like, that was so good. It, and I'm, that just got me so amped for the rest of this month to see, you know, all of these different Hitchcock films. I cannot wait. Oh my goodness. Thank you guys so much for watching this with me. All right, everyone, that does it for this video. As always, if you liked it as much as I did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification to stay in the loop. All right, so in the next video, we are continuing our journey through the mind of Alfred Hitchcock with his film, Notorious. And I've actually been looking forward to watching Notorious, honestly, because I wanna see Cary Grant and Ingrid Bergman act against each other. Like, it just seems like such an interesting dynamic because you have two, you know, like powerhouse actors in one movie. So I'm very excited to see their chemistry and their character dynamic. As always, if you have not seen Notorious, then I highly suggest that you check it out either in its entirety or just check a quick synopsis of it online. Then come back with all of your movie facts and your movie insights, and we are going to talk about it in the comment box below. If you have a recommendation for any classic Hollywood films, go ahead and check out our recommendation form. It's linked in the description box below. Also, please continue to recommend in the comments. Thank you to all the subscribers and the viewers. You guys, this has been so much fun. Everyone, please stay safe and healthy out there, and I will see all of you in the next video. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Rebecca was originally a novel. Blah, blah. See, I, why? According to my research, there was much excitement about making the film a film. <laughs> I'll try again, okay. And it ended up being obviously created. <laughs> No, that wasn't right. Okay, let me try that again. In October of 2020, 2020, I was going to say 2020. <laughs> wow. What did I write? Oh my God. Also, did you see my nails? Okay, I got my nails done specifically for Hitchcock month. I wanted them to look as like villainous as possible. Totally off subject. <laughs> I'll try again. Okay.